Hey everyone, welcome back. It's now time to take everything we've learned about dynamic programming and take it to the next level to handle more complex games and environments. If you recall, dynamic programming is a purely brute force algorithm. It requires looping through all possible states multiple times until the calculated values converge. Therefore, it's not very practical for complex games with large action and state spaces. With Monte Carlo, we only update our value table V for visited states. We don't need to know states ahead of time. We can just discover them as we play. That means Monte Carlo is much more efficient for creating optimal policy in more complex games. The Monte Carlo algorithm is at the heart of Alpha Zero success in learning extremely complex games like chess and go from scratch and playing them at a superhuman level. Chess has pushed the limits of brute force computing, and Go is so complex brute force is absolutely impossible. When it's impossible or impractical to try out each possibility, we can either randomly sample moves or ideally figure out an intelligent strategy to estimate what is most promising to try. That's what Monte Carlo refers to. Previously, we were playing the game in God mode. We knew all the state transition probabilities and never actually played the game. But this isn't always workable in the real world. Often we don't know transition probabilities ahead of time. We must discover them as we play. With Monte Carlo learning, we are going to discard any prior knowledge of the game and start learning from pure experience. We collect experience and use the familiar Bellman equation to estimate the long-term discounted rewards called returns, which we can expect from each state and action given the current policy. We're going to iteratively improve both our value calculations and policy with every episode. To accomplish this, we're going to need to learn the basic concepts of Q learning. Q seems to be a letter chosen arbitrarily by the mathematicians who invented the concept, but most assume the letter Q stands for quality. Q represents the long-term discounted rewards we can expect given our current policy if we take action A from state S. If you look at our original Bellman equation, Q is everything inside the max A section. We're in state S. We estimate Q for every possible action. Then we choose the action with the highest Q value. It's actually very simple. Here's the equation we use to formulate our policy and select the best action for a given state. All right, a way to read this is the policy for state S is to choose the action with the highest Q value. The value function is looking for the return we get from taking the best action. On the other hand, our policy function is doing the same calculation but returning what the best action is. The Bellman equation, as we've learned it so far, assumes perfect knowledge of the game, but now we're dealing with estimates rather than perfect values. The basic equation stays the same, but we're changing some of the symbols around to show their estimates. Recall from our original Bellman equation that we are calculating absolute values for each state with the assumption we are taking the best action. In Monte Carlo, we are learning from experience, so I have no idea what the actual best action is. Instead of calculating the absolute value of states, we are calculating the expected value relative to our current policy. More accurate value estimates lead to better policy. And better policy leads to more accurate value estimates. We simply repeat until they both converge. Policy is really just a simple lookup table which shows us what we currently believe is the best action to take in each state. In Monte Carlo learning, we start with a random policy. We play the game and use experience to make our estimated value of each state more accurate. More accurate values lead to improved policy, which leads to more accurate values and we just continue until it all converges and stops changing between each iteration. In order to estimate values from experience we are going to use a concept called returns. A return is essentially the reward we get from our immediate action plus all the discounted rewards multiplied by gamma for each step thereafter until the end of the episode as we follow the current policy. This is denoted by the letter G. Don't ask me why, it's just an arbitrary decision made by reinforcement learning pioneers. G of T could be read as the return we received at step T of the game. This is the formula. G of T equals the reward from time step T plus one plus gamma 
times the total returns from time step t plus 1. So in other words, it's a recursive function just like our Bellman equation. g of t equals the immediate reward received plus all discounted rewards thereafter received by following our current policy. How do we calculate returns after an episode? We work backward from the final state, iterating the transitions from an episode in reverse order. Once we have a collection of SG pairs from multiple episodes, we simply average the returns to get the estimated value for each state. Let's look at the exact algorithm we'll be using in our code to accomplish this. It's not that complicated. Step 1. Initialize our returns g to 0. Second 2. We create an empty list called states and returns. Step 3. We loop backwards through the list of states and rewards that we obtained from playing the game. We append a tuple with our current state and the previous value of g to our states and returns list. Then we set the new g to the reward plus the gamma times the previous value of g. Finally, when that's all done, we reverse the states and returns to the original order so we can go through them in the original order we played the game. Obviously, if we're playing the game with a fixed policy, we could get stuck in a position where the best moves remain undiscovered. As you learned previously, in order to find the ideal policy, we've got to strike a balance between exploiting the policy we know so far and exploring other possible actions which could prove to be better. Accomplishing this is very simple. We're going to use a strategy called Epsilon Greedy. Epsilon is simply a hyperparameter, and it's a probability that our agent will choose a random action instead of going with the policy for any given move. The algorithm is very simple. First, we generate a random number called p between 0 and 1. Second, if p is less than 1 minus Epsilon, we take the action dictated by policy. Otherwise, we take a random action. I want to point out a simple optimization we can use to allow our code to run a little bit faster. What happens if we visit the same state more than once in a given episode? It's been proven that calculating returns for more than one visit to the same state won't change the answer or the ideal policy that we get. All we need is a first visit to every given state, so we can throw away all subsequent visits and that makes our computing faster. Finally, we're ready to take a look at the final algorithm that we're going to use to solve grid world using the Monte Carlo method. First, initialize policy to a random action for every state. Second, initialize our Q table to zero for every possible state and action. Three, initialize our returns table as an empty array for every possible state and action. Four, we're going to loop through n times or n is simply an arbitrary number high enough to make the values converge. Uh, in our case, we're going to use about 10,000. Step five, play the game and get a list of states, actions, returns. So it's a tuple with the state, the action took, and then the return calculated. For every SAG in states, actions, returns, if we haven't seen this state and action pair so far in the game, Append the calculated return g to our returns array for that particular state and action. And then we set q value for that particular state and action to be the mean of all the returns we've seen so far for that state and action. Right now we loop through each non-terminal state s to calculate our policy. So the policy for the state s is the action with the highest q value for the state s. Now, since it's useful to have a table of values, we're going to go through each state s and assign v of s to the highest q value for each state. Finally, we're done with everything, so we're going to return the value table we calculated and we're going to return the policy table we calculated. All right, now it's time to take a look at the Python code which will accomplish this. The new file is called MonteCarlo.py. As before, we're importing grid world and utils. These haven't changed much since the last time. Epsilon is a probability of taking a random action in our epsilon greedy action selection algorithm. N episodes is how many episodes we should run. And each time you run this, you'll see a neat graph pop up so you can visualize when our values are converging. The first major function is epsilon action. 
This is the exact epsilon greedy algorithm we just learned. We generate a random number. If it's less than 1 minus epsilon, we follow policy. Otherwise, we pick a random action. Next, we have the play game function. This takes an instance of our grid class and the current policy table. First, we play an entire episode and collect state action reward triplets. Here's the part where we loop in reverse through the experience we collected to calculate returns. We skip the final state, the first one we encounter on our reverse list, since it doesn't correspond to any move. Then we calculate returns from discounted rewards and append them to state's actions returns. Finally, we reverse that list back to the original order we played the game in and return it. The Monte Carlo function takes an instance of our grid class. First, we initialize our queue table to all zeros for every possible action in every possible state. The deltas list keeps track of how much our queue values are changing each iteration so we can tell when it has converged. Now we enter the main loop which is repeated for the number of episodes specified. We play the game to get a list of state action return triplets. Looping through this, first we make sure we haven't previously encountered this state action pair in the episode. Then we append the G to our returns for state and action. We save the old Q value and average all the returns we have previously collected for our state and action. We track the biggest change that occurred in our Q values and append that to the list of deltas after the loop. Now we loop through each non-terminal state and find the action with the highest Q value. This becomes our new policy for that state. Finally, we output a table of estimated values for each state. This is just so we can print and compare. We return the value table, policy table, and list of deltas for each iteration. The main function is very simple. We create an instance of the grid class. You can adjust the obey probability and step cost here. We then send the grid into the Monte Carlo function and get the results. We print everything out and graph the deltas. I'll let you play around with this on your own. Try out different values for obey prob and step cost. Compare this to the results from running the same parameters in value iteration.py, which we covered last unit. Also play around with n episodes. If the number is too low, you'll end up with wildly different results each time you run. Finally, play around with epsilon. How does this affect the number of episodes required to converge? Please post any interesting observations you make in the comments below. If you want to really increase your understanding of how this all works, I encourage you to code it yourself using the algorithms from the beginning of the video as a reference. Import from Grid World and Noodles, but write the Monte Carlo algorithm yourself. This will give you the ability to use it in real world projects. This is Colin Scout, and I'll see you soon in the next unit. Until then, happy coding.